came from a two-parent home, had everything that I wanted, not a problem. But out in the streets intrigued me more than what I had at home. A lot of things that I did in my lifetime, you know, I've sold drugs, I, I've done a lot of illegal activities. I started looking at my kids. I have three daughters, and it, that's when it kind of got real to me. You know, all this street activity, all this stuff that you're out here doing is not as important as your kids. So um, I kind of started trying to change, do something different. I'm Gary Slutkin. I'm the founder and executive director of Cure Violence. I'm a physician. My training is infectious diseases, and I worked overseas for about 15 years on epidemics. When I came back to Chicago, Chicago was confronting a problem of over 700 killings a year. It was known very famously or infamously as a murder capital. And I was hearing about punishment, and I already knew that punishment wasn't the main driver of behavior. I didn't think this was going to be um, effective. Every trauma surgeon who does this for a living understands the scope of the problem and realizes that something needs to be done. It's not just the person who shot that it affects, but if you really take a look at the scope of violence and, and who it affects, it destroys their family's life and their friends. It destabilizes a community. There's an extraordinary sort of ripple effect that occurs by even intervening in one confrontation or, or, or saving one victim from being shot. It was absolutely clear that this was a health and a public health issue and that the strategies that we ordinarily use for changing behavior and for shifting norms would be those that would be needed here. So the cure violence model is one that really is based in the fundamentals of chronic disease management, changing behaviors around how individuals view a particular illness. We train our folks on identifying conflicts that could potentially escalate. And then we also train them on intervening in those conflicts to avoid either potential retaliations or ongoing beefs. And then also including training and activities on reinforcement of the new social norms that we want to see within particular communities. go out and engage the community. We uh, work with high-risk individuals uh, to try to kind of change their mindset, get them out of the streets. Come on, get part of this peace movement, huh? Most people sometimes they say, well, how does it work alongside with law enforcement? How can they both exist together? Real easy. At some point, when someone's shot, we're going to be there. But that tape is coming down. And we're going to be leaving. But the people who live there are still there, and the problems there are still there. That's where the cure of violence model is being applied in the proper dosage to deal with the problems that they have in that neighborhood to prevent another shooting from occurring. I led the first evaluation of a replication of the cure violence model in Baltimore. We looked at the places that had the cure violence model compared with those that didn't. What we found was that in three out of the four neighborhoods, there was a significant reduction in one or both measures of gun violence. In one neighborhood, they reduced homicides by 56%. Over the course of a three-year evaluation, the model actually saved over $5 million uh, in terms of the cost related to homicides as well as disabilities. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has been taking a big lead in this field, and it's beautiful that they are in particular because they are the nation's largest health foundation. The research now shows that exposure to violence not only causes more violence, but causes family dysfunctions and all other kinds of health problems. It's the roadblock to all kinds of 
progress. And the key is you've got to have the right people on the ground in your neighborhood. Violence is a disease. We're kind of looking at ourselves as the antidote for that. One of the ideas of a credible messenger is a person that has been out there in the trenches, that's done it, and that's changed their, their life, their self. And I'm one of them. Seeing more people on the street, it's as simple as that. They're going out, they're using the parks, they're walking with their kids, they're talking to their neighbors on the stoop. I want our community to start thriving again. I want everybody to be able to live peacefully. I want the kids to be able to play outside without worrying about getting shot. I want the old people to feel safe walking down to the corner store. I want to see families back together. Here in Kansas City, Missouri East Patrol District, we are 101 days homicide free year to date. Yes! <laughs>